Hello and welcome to the next video. Caleb Fiarley here with my good friend Jacob Pace of Pace Images. He's a local photographer here in Eugene, Oregon. And we're just gonna dive in a little bit about his journey being a photographer, a small business owner, and you know, we'll just have a good conversation here. So let's get started with talking about, you know, what is the journey been like for you to come where you've come from to be six months into your own business as a solo photographer and just tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, yeah. It has been a wild ride. Um, I mean, the quick cliff notes, I've been to India for Google. I've worked uh, an 18 hour day straight. Nice. Um, and then I get to go in the most random places that, you know, not everybody gets to go to the, the back of a kitchen, the football field of a college stadium, um, in a helicopter flying sideways. Nice. Um, it's just a, a really sporadic random life that you step into. Um, I came out of fine art school. I dove right into interning at a commercial studio. Uh, I started doing Photoshop work all day long. Come sit at my desk, edit images, yeah, and then they'd go to print. So tell us what the difference is between a commercial photographer or a commercial studio versus you know somebody who's out there shooting weddings during the summer. Sure. I guess the the, the first main thing is you're working business to business. Okay. The commercial business is hired by the ad agency, the marketing firm. Um, it's hired by the business that this needs is rude somebody. by the way. Yeah, we have we have the, she's the fly keep, she's keeping the fly the fly catching room. She's a great guard dog. <laughs> a business like a um, grass seed company okay. might hire a commercial photographer to create imagery to help with their branding. Yeah. Um, where a wedding photographer is working with a consumer, a, a, a single family or a single right. person to come and photograph their wedding and it's not necessarily used for commercial purposes right. more. So the commercial side is really focused on branding, marketing, you know, pushing the business that hires them to mm -hmm. say, hey, this is the product we're trying to sell. Help us get the image out there. Mm -hmm. Nice. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. So you went to school at the U of O. Mm -hmm. How was that process as far as learning how to be in the photography? You know, tell us more about what that was like. The training that I went through at the university is a little different than, say, going to a commercial photography school. Um, fine art based, really abstract. Mm. Um, there wasn't a lot of focus on the precise nature of getting an exposure or working with studio strobe lights or hot lights. We learned that, but it was more about the concept and problem solving. And so, in the beginning, when I feel like I lacked that technical information, I felt really strong in problem solving for a client or for the studio that I was working for. As an assistant or as a grip or someone in lighting, a lot of times that's what you're doing is you're simply problem solving an issue to keep the project moving forward. Okay, so tell us what a grip is. I have no idea what a grip is. Uh, a grip is someone that helps set up light, um, that builds a set, okay. that uh, carries the equipment on set, on location. Um, you have your light stands, you have crossbars, you have your lights, you have C stands, C all sorts of- All the things. Yeah, all the <laughs> things that, that, help a, that help a production happen okay. um, with propping things up, setting lights up, different Sweet. things like that. And, and a grip brings this knowledge and this expertise specific to that. Okay, so right out of the U of O, you graduated, mm -hmm. then it's, what was the next step? You got into a studio working full-time? Yep, yeah, I got into a studio working full-time about six months after college. And um, I did editing work. I assisted when they needed an extra assistant. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that was simply standing right next to the photographer and waiting for them to have a need. Mm. And they would ask that of me and I would execute it. Nice. Usually as efficiently as possible, as safely as possible, right. but sometimes shoots a very fast pace and you have to be yeah. able to react and react S right. Sounds like a really good environment to learn. You know, just on the job learning, you know, you get the university kind of version of your education and mm -hmm. then being in a role like that, I imagine, was a lot to learn and probably had to learn pretty fast. 
You, yeah, you do, you do. And I, I wanted to because I wanted to succeed uh, and, and I push myself yeah. uh, in that wanting to succeed. And so, um, you know, being able to just stand by the photographer and watch what he's doing, watch how he talks to uh, the models or yeah. talks to the client, um, I was able to pick up on a lot being right there versus being offset. Awesome. Um, yeah. And organizing equipment or something like that. Right. And so I got to learn a lot really quickly. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So, you know, you sounds like you had a really cool studio, you know, a good environment to work in. You know, what led you to go ahead and say, all right, I'm saying no to the consistency, the constant paycheck, and I'm going to step out and forge my own territory and be my own solo photographer. Yeah. So uh, a, a little little story before that yeah. is I, I took the opportunity to leave the studio and go work in-house for a large company okay. and be an in-house photographer. Nice. It was kind of like a safe step to being the one in charge with the photography. Right. And so I got to make the calls on the look and the branding and then partner that with an art director and work directly with a lot of different people. Cool. And so I was that visual voice for several years. And then at a certain point, um, well, not at a certain point, the whole time I missed working with lots of different varieties of companies mm. and different people. And so I wanted to get back into that. Yeah. Um, and that's another one of those challenges and problem solving is every company has a different brand and look. Right. You have a different look than I have. Mm -hmm. Rue has a different look than <laughs> you have, you know. Yeah. Uh, so being able to work in that world of variety was really nice. And so I decided to step back into that world and it came with so many more challenges than I even realized. Yeah. Right now I believe that even the most a uh, developed business owner still deals with it yeah. every day. Right. Um, it's just they have the history to react <clears throat> and answer. Right. No doubt. Yeah. So what do you feel like, I mean, so you're six months from leaving the in-house studio, right? So mm -hmm. six months down the road, what have you learned? I have learned, well, more broadly, I have learned life balance. Mm. And, I, and I'm still working on it. I haven't. I haven't answered that and, and figured it out, but I realized if you don't balance life out, hmm. you burn out. Yeah. You don't love what you do. I, well, that's what's happening to me is I, I started having a hard time loving creating. Um, and so you have to have that, that family balance, that friend balance, that, that mental health and that physical health and just keeping everything in check because there is so much that, you either feel you need to do or you actually have to do to keep the business going. Yeah. But you have to realize that you have to stop and punch out mentally or physically to get yourself to stop working. Yeah. I think that's a, a common theme for most small business owners, I would imagine, because I've experienced it, you know, being away from where you're just in that environment where you clock in and you clock out. Yeah. You can go into that job pretty half-brained and make it through the day. You know, mm -hmm. if you're running your own business, if you're trying to be a photographer creating, if I'm sitting down as a life coach and I'm working with a client or I'm doing a buyer consultation with somebody, you got to be all in. You got to be on your A game. Yes. And it's really tricky sometimes learning that balance in the structure, mm -hmm. you know, because we're, we're all different. We all have different businesses and personality types and needs and wants. And it's hard, like, Balancing, you know, how do I organize my life so that my business thrives? Mm -hmm. You know, the benefit and maybe the downside, I, I work from home. Yeah. Um, and so my office is in the home and it can be hard to shut off. Part of it, you know, is a, maybe an assurance that you care so much. But like last night, I woke up in the middle of the night thinking about projects. Mm hmm and I, I got up and I checked my computer about some information that was loading to the cloud. And it gave me peace of mind to go back to bed knowing that right. things were doing what it needed to be doing overnight. Yeah. Uh, but again, that's like the gift and the curse is you wake up and it's right there versus when you do punch in and out and work for somebody that a lot of times you can shut off knowing that A, you're not getting paid or, or B, it's at the office. Right. Um, yeah, I, the analogy I just thought of hearing you talk about that is, 
I've, I've had a very similar experience. You know, it's mm -hmm. like m my phone is my business. You know, mm -hmm. clients are reaching out to me, you know, scheduling, you know, contracts are being, you know, reviewed, written, inspections on houses. All the things happen off my little phone, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. However, it can be a terrible terrible thing when you're trying to relax or spend time with family the analogy i thought of just now was you know as small business owners if you think about your income as fire yeah we have to tend the fire and yeah. if it goes out it takes a lot of work to get more business in the pipeline um you know your business as a photographer is pretty similar to real estate you got to be ha lining up clients before they're ready for business yep so that you have a constant flow to keep you busy to pay your bills set your you know income goals and all of that and so you know it's just a beautiful analogy i think to think about you know sometimes you have to get up and stoke the fire a little bit and learning how to balance you know when am i supposed to be feeding the fire or when can i just trust that the coals will be there in the morning mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. really difficult mm -hmm. that's it that's part of the journey you know it's a perfect analogy yeah. it, it really is because there is a point when you create that relationship with somebody and once that I'll use all sorts of analogies here we go <laughs> once you plant the seed and the roots grow right. on that relationship that those are the coals then the coals and the roots are the same now everyone's confused yeah, sorry it's all good, it's all good. seriously what, once you've established that relationship and yeah. and people want to be working with you once you develop that relationship and people know you and want to work with you and have returned business. Uh, it's, it's that relationship that's built that there's trust involved. There's knowing that the product that you deliver, whatever it be, is consistent mm. in some way. And that goes back to then trust. Yeah. People can see the, the, the fake uh, nature of things. And so it, it has to come from your heart and it has to be true. Yeah. And that's where a really great relationship comes from. Yeah. hundred percent. I, you know, my thought in that is so, it's so complex to look at, you know, each client, even though in your own business, right? If we just draw the circle around what your business is, each client that steps into your circle has different needs, has different wants, has different personality types. You know, everyone, we're all so freaking unique that we always are needing to be curious. And I think it's evident when you are a client of a business that doesn't stay curious, mm -hmm. how that experience is, is so much different when you are involved with a business that is treating you like another number. Mm -hmm. And so having a perspective like you do and I, I do, but we stay curious. We, we mm -hmm. want to learn. We want to be addressing the needs of our clients. It's huge because I think that comes across as transparency and integrity mm -hmm. and authenticity. You know, those are really important to establish that relationship. Once the roots have gone down, you know, you're there. You know, like you're their photographer, I'm their coach, I'm their realtor, whatever it is, like mm -hmm. you've got the relationship. You can't just give up. Mm -hmm. You can't be like, oh, I got one. Okay, I'm good. Yep. You know, everything's going to continue to grow from then on. And it's like when I experience a business and I'm a patron of them mm -hmm. and they don't and they stop and they quit the learning. You know, like yesterday I talked about grit and the growth mindset mm -hmm. and having a growth mindset as a business owner and how you treat the people that are basically giving you money, feeding that fire, mm -hmm. is really valuable. And it's just, I think it's Absolutely. so, it's kind of like you either know you have it or you know they don't have it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's pretty it's mm -hmm. pretty easy to see. You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, nice, so tell us any other, what else have you learned? Tell Any other thoughts that you could share with, you know, someone else that's watching that's a new business owner or, or is potentially looking to step away from the consistent job and they're tired of the routine, they're ready to go be their own person. Basically could reiterate kind of what you're saying is just being open-minded and don't think that whatever formula you've come up with is the way that's going to bring you success. Mm. It might for six months, a year, three years, but then there's, I guarantee there's going to be something and you're going to have to decide to make a left or a right and change. Yeah and always evolve. The other is slowly creeping out of my head and I'm forgetting. 
<laughs> um, well, while you think about that, yeah, the only purpose of a goal is for the plan it creates. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's straight from another one of Gary Keller's books. I'm mm -hmm. like t quoting him all the, all the time now, but you know, it's such a different perspective to think about having an open mindset. I set the goal and I create the plan to get there, but along the way that may not have been the best plan, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And it sounds like you're learning that even today, you know, with the clients you're going th through and, and everything. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's so, so true. Uh, the, the one that left nice. as we got it back gracefully come back. <laughs> your timing was perfect Good. is the word's been used a lot. And I think a lot of people are kind of getting tired of it at this point is hustle. Yeah. And whatever word you want to use for that a descriptor and the do yeah. is you do have to work hard. Yeah. Um, social media shows us this glamorous life in whatever genre that you want to step into. If, if you literally are a uh, influencer and you're an Instagram influencer and you travel the world and it's beautiful and glorious, <laughs> yeah. I would say that's like maybe less, like 25% of that person's life. Mm. You know, those images that you see that's really right. beautiful. Then there's everything else on the back end. Um, I've seen folks that travel to Bali and the tropics and different places and they stay at hotels and you know they're sitting in this infinity pool at sunset and it, you're just jealous <laughs> yeah. um, well they had to either contact the hotel or the hotel contacted them then they had to work out a structure of some sort of agreement contracts involved um, rights and usage for the imagery I'm sure the hotel will be using those images um, those Instagrammers, if they're doing it right, they're not only business owners, they're also photographers. Right. They're also writers. They're, they're multifaceted people if, if they're doing well. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of work behind that. Yeah. You know, it, people tell me that, oh my gosh, you're living the dream, you're working the dream. I, it's not a, a dream. I, it's, it's, it's a passion of mine that I'm, that I'm making a reality because I'm willing to work a 15 hour day yeah that was yesterday there's there's so much greatness that that comes from that yeah um the biggest thing is i get to edit in my pajamas every morning <laughs> there you go okay i mean i do but that's not the biggest <laughs> thing <laughs> yes 15 hour day when i'm in my pjs going to work it's powerful yeah. yeah uh no they're, they're just like when i get to work with a company I get to partner with a company that helps kids in the school systems. Mm. I get to help inform people about the product they make, which is to help the kids stay in the school systems yeah. and not get detention or get expelled. Yeah. So I'm there to provide this voice to help our younger generation. It's powerful. Like it, it, it just kind of, it does. It, it like, it stops me for a minute. Like, um, I love that. I feel like I'm actually doing something worthwhile. Yeah. Um, that that's part of what pushes me to, to keep going. That's beautiful. Uh, I love it. I think to me that is why both of us left the consistency. Mm -hmm. Is that you know we've talked about this before where you know life is so dang short and we all have to work. We all have to make money. And unless you were born wealthy and you just have you know, trust money raining down on you. Yeah. You've got to go hustle. Yeah. And I love that I can go hustle and make change mm -hmm. in my clients' lives mm -hmm. rather than just push some business owner's agenda forward. Yep. You know, not that that's a bad thing. Not everybody wants to be out there, you know, stoking their own fire. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I think, you know, for people like you and me, like we want to create, we want to be on the front lines <clears throat> and mm -hmm. it's so rewarding. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's almost that feeling of keeping kids in school mm -hmm. and knowing that the work you do is going to go on for generations. I mean, that's better than the paycheck you get. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, the you know, the long-term goal with, with starting a business, um, well, like, this isn't a five-year plan. Yeah. This is a till death does me part <laughs> plan, yeah. you know. Uh, I hope to be able to give back to my community and hire an employee mm -hmm. at some point. 
That would be awesome. Yeah. To be able to provide economic wealth to where we live. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it might be a while. Right now, I'm able to hire assistants when I have bigger jobs, and that feels good. Yeah. So I'm getting work to people. Nice. Um, I hope to help grow the creative professional community. And I say professional community being the commercial based. Um, I can try to help the fine art based communities or the or the the amateur enthusiasts that love it. I just haven't figured that one out quite yet. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll figure out a way. One of these days. Yeah. Another question I wanted to ask you is, you know, if you're where you're at now, six months down the road, mm -hmm. you talked about how this isn't a five year plan. Mm -hmm. You know, where do you envision yourself six years from now? Man, six years from now. I woke up thinking about what the heck I had to do by Friday. <laughs> six years from now, I would I would like to have those those smoldering coals, those deep roots with people in my community. Yeah. Are you still confused? <laughs> I would like to have good relationships yeah. with people in this community doing business with them. Yeah. That a ad agency, a marketing firm, or a business, another business owner can call me and say, hey, Jacob, we have this project. We remember the last project we did. We'd love to work together again. Or, Jacob, let's grab a beer. We got another project to talk about, and that's a client that I've worked for for five years. Nice. Um, I'd love to develop that, that trust and that understanding between myself and other business uh, businesses. Yeah. So I want to just take a minute and point out to anybody watching this, when I hear you talk about that as your six year plan, it, it just is, it's so inspiring because, you know, we do have to hustle and money is part of it. And so many people in our culture are money focused. Mm -hmm. Six years from now, I want to be making a million bucks with my mm -hmm. photography. That's mm -hmm. not where you went. You went relationship. Yeah. And by having those deep rooted relationships that you're talking about, the money's going to be there. Like the, it's mm -hmm. just how it works. Like mm -hmm. you're going to show up and be the guy who has expertise, has the skill and has the character worth calling back. Yeah. I, and I, I know that cause you're my friend and I'm biased, but I've seen the work you do six months into it. That's the trajectory you are on yep. is that six years so. down the road, these little baby trees that you've been planting with these clients mm -hmm. are going to be ferocious oak trees that are just pouring. That's your money tree, you know, <laughs> like analogies for days. Anyway, it's just, I, it's inspiring to connect with people like you. And that's why I wanted to do this interview is just to talk about, you know, your vision, your path and, and just bring light to what you're fostering right now. It's something that comes from my core to want to develop relationships. Um, I, Truth be told, I've been I've been learning kind of how to run a business for ten-ish years, uh, and I continually have conversations with my father, who's a business owner. Okay, and every time I would talk about you know wanting to find a new client, wanting to meet someone new that I could help, um, he would he just t said it's simple. He goes, the more energy you put into something, the exact reciprocation you will receive. Mm. And it's, it's true. It's, it's been very true so far yeah. over those years when I have taken time to either, uh, seek out someone that I would like to work with, or I've seen someone that I've said, Oh, they, they could use my help and they deserve it really do. Um, I'm working a nine to five and then I take all my other open times in life to engage with that person. Um, it's almost always worked. Yeah. And so, that's where this comes from for me is is the effort put in you will have come out and so I focus on relationships. Awesome. Yeah. It's beautiful. All right, so let's plug Pace Images. Tell us a little bit about your business and just kind of what you're doing, how people can reach out to you. Okay. Follow what you're doing. Okay. Um, let's see. Pace Images, a commercial photography. Um, I am around to help develop people's brand or take it from zero to 
the first, you know, 10% to get a company going, um, to continue the brand and look that a company already has. Nice. Uh, I'll create visual representation for those companies, for cool. those businesses. Cool. Um, I can be found online, jacobpace.com, jacobpace.com. <laughs> and then all the social medias, uh, <laughs> just Jacob Pace. Uh, and then Pace Images is, is the company. Cool. Yeah. Sweet Instagram account. I definitely recommend following it. Thank you. Um, some really cool behind the scenes uh, Insta stories once in a while. It's pretty fun seeing you and your face filters and <laughs> just talking through anything that you're going through. It's pretty rad. So, well, thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this interview. And, you know, my goal for this is to help use this video to water those trees for your clients and for your relationships. Help spread the word. I mean, if you need commercial photography, Jacob's a guy. He's done great work for me. Um, highly recommend him. And so until next time, thanks for watching. And we'll, uh, we'll probably do this again one day. Why not? Yeah. We can have other things to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cheers, y'all.